Hello, my name is Susan Simpson. I am the co-creator and author of The Great Science Adventures, published by Common Sense Press. I'd like to take a few minutes to tell you about the program. Currently, we have eight books available in our Great Science Adventures. In the Earth Sciences, we have The World of Space, Discovering Earth's Landforms and Surface Features, Discovering the Ocean. In our physical science programs, we have Discovering Atoms, Molecules, and Matter, The World of Light and Sound, and The World of Tools and Technology. In our life sciences, we have Discovering the Human Body and Senses, The World of Insects and Arachnids, the world of vertebrates, and the world of plants. I'm going to use the world of plants as an example for telling you about our program and how it works. In the beginning of the book, you will find the how to use section. This is for you to read at your leisure. Hopefully, I will answer most of your questions in this talk. After that, we have a section that are the 3D graphic organizers from Dynazite that are used in this book. Um, they come directly from Dinah and we have her permission to use them. She was the other co-creator of this program and was very involved in the process. The graphic organizers are things that you may be familiar with. Many times people take their work and put it into a folder or a book so that it can be self-contained and have everything right there. That is part of what a graphic organizer is about. You may have also heard that them used as lap books. Lap books is a name that a homeschool mom gave to these graphic organizers when she was teaching Dynazyke's methods to homeschoolers. Technically, they are called graphic organizers, and I will explain to you why. They take the information that we are trying to teach to the children, and they organize it in a manner that makes sense. We use the graphics to help the students learn. This particular graphic organizer is made in the world of insects and arachnids. The point of it is that all insects have three body parts, a head, the thorax, and the abdomen. You can see that this graphic organizer clearly represents that concept. As the student works throughout the program, they continue to use this graphic organizer. As they will learn about the mouth parts of an insect, they will put the information under the head because that's where the mouth parts are. The same with the eyes and the antenna. When they get down to the thorax, they will learn that all insects have six legs attached to the thorax. Some of them have one or two pair of wings also attached to the thorax. And the abdomen is used for reproduction purposes. So over the weeks, as the students are working with this organizer, they are constantly reviewing and reinforcing that knowledge. And you can imagine if someone ever asks them, how many body parts does an insect have? They'll clearly see this in their head and know the answer is three. So I encourage you to use the graphic organizers, allow your students to draw the graphics if they desire, to use the graphics that we have in the back of the book, in the student section, and if they use those graphics, allow them to color it, paint it, or leave it blank. The important part is that these organizers belong to them. There's a sense of ownership. All right, I'll show you how they're used in the program. Now we are entering the teacher section. The teacher section is written in 24 lessons. Every one of these books has the exact same format. 
So if you learn how to use one, you know how to use all of them. The rest of the book is divided into the teacher section and the student section. Okay, and I'll tell you more about the student section as we go along. This is lesson number one in the world of plants. The concepts that will be taught in this lesson are listed here. This is for the teacher's purpose. This is so you will know what to emphasize as you're reading and as you're directing your students. We list vocabulary words that are possible to be used. Uh, Dr. Ruth Beechick has um, I think wisely communicated to us that learning vocabulary in science is a double whammy because if we know the vocabulary we know the concept. If we know the concept we know the vocabulary. So we have listed words in here that we think might be important for your students to learn. We have asterisks next to the words that are for your older students. Okay. The next section in the lesson is to read lots of science library book number one. That takes us back to the student section. We have these small books, they look like this when they are made, for each of the lessons. So we're going to look at the, the book for lesson one. It's entitled, What is a Plant? You have permission to photocopy these books so that each one of your students may have it. We've designed the program specifically so that you can teach all of your students at the same time. If you have a sixth grader, a fourth grader, and a second grader, they can all do science together. We've even included enough information for your seventh and eighth graders to be involved. If you have a group like that, you may include a first grader, uh, but I don't think these are appropriate for just one first grader. All right, so you've made a copy of each book for each one of your students, and they've cut them out and put them together. So now you're gonna sit down with your students and read the book. If you have readers in your group, you can ask them to read. If you don't, you can ask them to point to things or whatever. Also, for your older students, if you are teaching them how to highlight information so that they could so they can readily find it, again, you may include that in your reading time. So after you read this book, again, focusing on the concepts we're teaching, then you want to discuss it with your students. Okay? Come back over here. Now we have activities that are based on these concepts. Okay, You've just read the book with the students, so you've introduced the concepts, you've talked about it, you've reviewed. Now we're going to do some activities to reinforce what they've learned. Our first activity is a lab. We call them an investigative loop because we want to have a procedure for the students to follow for each one of the labs. And this particular lab is for observation, and that's what most of them are. And it's called Watch a Plant Grow. In each one of our programs, of our books, your students will make a lab book. This lab book is from uh, The Light and Sound, but it's a good example. All right, we have a graphic for each lab. It will tell you right here, lab materials you need are two or three bean seeds, a paper towel, ruler, and chalk, and a clear glass filled with soil. Okay. Also here we have listed the paper handouts you need and the graphic organizer. Now, for the graphic organizer, it tells you the type of organizer you need to make and where to find it in this section. Okay, These have very clear directions with samples for you to look at. And then you continue to proceed with the lab. As you do, your student will record data on index cards, 
or sh sheets of notebook paper that you've cut out that will fit inside the lab book. Each lesson may not have a lab, but for each lab, you will create a book that the students can record their observations in. At the end of the program, all the books can be glued together, covered, and then you have it all in one place. Also, over here we have a graphic organizer that the students will make. Again, this is all at your discretion. If you do not want to do this one, you just skip it and go on to something else, okay? But on this one I want to show you, we have the different levels in this section. It's a right, they're going to write inside the graphic organizer, and one pencil indicates a student who is just beginning to read or write. So we might have them copy something, or write a list, or draw a picture, or something like that. And under one pencil, we have those directions. Under two pencils, we have uh, directions for a student who is writing more, who is reading better, who can find information and copy it. And three pencils is for a student who is able to compose and write paragraphs and things like that. So basically the one pencil is for your younger grades one and two, two pencil would be for three, four, and three pencil would be four and five and six. And if you're, if you're having older students, seventh or eighth graders, they would do the three pencil as well. Also in every lesson we have experiences, investigations, and research. These are additional activities that you can add to this lesson. Okay, some are for younger students, some are for older. But if you're teaching a 7th or 8th grader, you may want to look in here and see if there's something for them. This is another graphic organizer. Again, it tells you the materials you need, the paper, and which organizer to use. It's on page 2. So you can turn to page 2 and you can find the organizer that you need for this activity. That is the end of one lesson. When we turn to the next lesson, lesson two, I wanted to show you this one. It's the same idea. The concepts are here. A note to the teacher, vocabulary words, and all of our information is in the Lots of Science library book. This is basically in lieu of a textbook. This is going to explain to the students what they need to understand. We use graphics to indicate what's going on. And then those same graphics are used in the organizers that they make. Okay, um, so after you've read the book, then you will come over and this is the graphic organizer for photosynthesis. In this particular one, we have one graphic organizer for the one pencil student and we have another organizer for the two and three pencil student. We have another lab and as you can see, the lab is numbered 2-1. That means it's in Latin 2 and it's the first lab. If you look in the graphics in the back, you will see a graphic entitled Lab 2-1. That is to be cut out and glued onto the page in the lab book. Okay, again, this is from Light and Sound. As you continue on through the program, you will have your student complete all of the graphic organizers in the book and when they finish they will have a book of plants which will tell them everything they have learned about the different plants, how they grow, what, what the parts of the plants are doing for the plant. Everything will be in here. 
Now, as you can see, if your student has spent time and energy on this, it's something they will be proud of and feel ownership of. And it's an excellent thing to show grandma and grandpa when they come to visit. Again, they're reviewing every time they look at it. 